Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Stamp and Chat Live. I am Gina from Gina K Designs, and it's great to see all of you from all over the United States and all over the world joining us here for another Monday Night Madness. <laughs> we had a busy day at work today. We're busy getting orders out. We're just wrapping up Wednesday orders, if you can believe it, but we got hit so hard with that Black Friday sale. So, but we are making our way through them. And as the days go on, we will it will pick up a lot quicker because that first initial push was really crazy. But uh, we appreciate all your patience out there. And we know that a lot of you have already gotten your orders and we're happy to hear that. Uh, so yeah, so tonight, what I thought I would do is, have you guys ever heard of the acronym SIP? Just take a little sip. And I'm not talking about fruit salad. I am talking about making cards with just a little sip. And that stands for stamps, ink, and paper. So this is just really simple stamping. It's great for people who are maybe newer to the hobby where they don't have a lot of supplies yet. And it's also great for those of us that have been stamping for 20 plus years and just wanna get back to the basics. There's all these cool tools and gadgets and different things that you can do and put on your cards. But sometimes we forget how much fun it is just to take some colored ink pads, some cardstock, and some stamps and just make a card. So that's what I'm planning to do tonight. Now I am going to use some circle dies, um, but if you don't have circle dies and you're new, you can just cut little squares instead. Squares would work just as well, or you can use a circle punch or something else like that. So let me show you this stamp set that I want to use tonight and welcome everyone. I see lots of you coming in. Okay, so this is the perfect poinsettia stamp set, but I'm not going to use the poinsettias tonight. I've done so many cards with the poinsettias and if you haven't seen them, you can just go to my YouTube channel, click on videos and just find the videos with the pictures of the poinsettia cards and you can see how I layer these and how I make cards with these. But the stamps I wanted to use were some of these stamps that, you know, didn't get a whole lot of love during this kit because we were so fixated on the poinsettias, but these are really fun to use. Now for greetings, I wanted to do something that would fit in a circle. So of course, the Holiday Wreath Builder really fits that bill. All of these, um, greetings in here fit perfectly inside circle dies. They fit in something very small like this. So what I thought I would use is the circle dies from Master Layouts 3. And there's two different sets of them if you want big circles or you want small circles. So these are the ones that I thought I would use. But once again, if you don't have circle dies and you're new, just go ahead and cut squares. You'll get a very similar style and um, you don't have to worry about a die cutting machine. Okay, so I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock. So I have my little We Are Memory Keepers paper cutter here, and I am going to cut a piece of white cardstock. And again, you if you have the Master Layouts dies, by all means, use the Master Layouts dies. I'm going to cut this down to the size of Master Layouts 2, which is three and a half inches by four and three quarters of an inch put some lotion on earlier and now I'm struggling. So that is what you would get with the master layouts too, except the master layouts too would put that cute little stitching around the outside. Then I'm going to cut one more panel for this. I'm going to cut it out of guess what color? Black. I know you guys, um, my last five minute card video, I didn't use black and there were so many comments about that. People were like, wait a minute, you didn't use any black. What happened? I know. Every once in a while, I do that. In fact, Wendy from customer service actually texted me and she said, did you not add black in your card just for me? Because she's always teasing me that I use black in every card. and She thinks I should try other colors. So this would be the layering uh, panel in Master Layouts 2. So you get that nice little edge. <laughs> Judy, black, really? I'm so surprised. <laughs> oh, welcome. Some It's some people's first time being here for a live. It's great to have you here. 
as part of our crazy crew. We, uh, we love having you all here. Okay, so for colors for this card, I thought I would do something a little bit different. So um, I'm going to use grass green. I tend to use jelly bean and lucky clover a lot, and grass doesn't get nearly enough love from me. Um, so I'm going to use this, and then I'm also going to use Christmas pine. Now, they're very different greens. This is a more yellowy green. This is a little bit more of a blue green, not a turquoise, but if you were to ask what color makes this green, it's definitely got a lot of blue in it. And um, But they look great together on a card. And then for an accent color, instead of doing the traditional Christmas red, I'm going to use some plum punch. And then for my second card, if I have time to make a second card, if I shut up and get stamping, um, I'm going to use turquoise C. I think turquoise C is a great match with these two greens. And I also think plum punch looks really pretty together with those. So let's get on it. Let's start our first card. So the first stamp I want to use is this pine leaf, this little pine branch here. And again, I'm doing this just with an acrylic block. I mean, we're going back to the basics here. We're not even using the Misty tonight. Okay. And I'm going to start with some grass green. Okay. So I'm going to ink that up. I noticed that when I make my five minute card videos, I use a different camera and I jiggle the camera a lot. I got to get figure that out. And I'm just going to stamp this right here at the top like that. Isn't that a pretty stamp? I'm going to just flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Welcome, welcome, everyone. It's getting busy in here tonight. It's great to see all of you. Oh, it's cold here in Wisconsin. We actually had snow. Yes, we did. Tom came over this morning early to work before anybody got here to put salt down. Tom, how are you? Oh. <laughs> How's it going? Whoops. That's okay. <laughs> I am stressed today. Are you stressed? Yes. What are you stressed about? Like just, just Monday, everything's blowing through my office like a... The windows open. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's uh, we appreciate you always making time for us and bringing beautiful music to us. That is so yeah. nice of you to make I, yourself available. I need to practice what I preach. <laughs> relax. The the relax. Yeah, of course. All right. Well, it's good to see you. So now I'm going to use this sprig down here. And you might notice that this has a little empty spot at the top there that doesn't have a dot. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with that. That was actually done on purpose. And I never got to show you this when this kit was popular. Um, I usually, Diane, I usually do the five minute card videos on Thursday or Friday. I make them and I usually upload them on Friday when I can. That's usually my day because it takes takes quite a while to make it, believe it or not. I know it's a five minute card, but it takes more than five minutes to make the video. So I usually do the video on Thursday and then upload it on Friday. All right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to overlap this a little bit and I'm going to place this right here, kind of overlapped on this pine sprig. And this is the Christmas pine that I'm using. Oh, it's hot and humid in Texas. It was hot and humid here. Okay, there we go. So I'm adding that there. And I'm going to flip this around. I'm going to do it same as that on the other side. Like that. Okay. Then I'm going to... See these little pieces right here? These are the veins for the leaves, but I'm going to use this just to add a couple little spriggy things off to the side here, just like sticks. And I'm going to use plum punch for that. Just to add a couple sticks and I'm going to do two. So I'll put one like here and then I'll put another one just kind of like near it like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, thank you so much for suggesting the thumbs up. That really is uh, very nice of you. It really does help my channel. Let's see if I can nail that. There we go. Not bad. Not 
bit. And uh, if you're new to my channel here on YouTube, love it if you would hit the subscribe button then uh, and hit the notification bell. And then we'll always be sending you a little notification from YouTube whenever I'm about to go live. This way you won't miss the lives. Or if a new video comes out, you'll get a little notification. Okay, so this image right here is the center of the poinsettia. But I'm going to use it for the end of this little branch, almost like a little berry sprig. All right, and I'm going to use it, let's see, I'm going to use it in two places. I'm going to put one here, like that. And then I'm going to put another one here, and I'm just going to turn it a little bit, like that, just so that they look a little different. Then I'm going to do the same thing over here. Put one here. That's my stress relieving cord. That's your stress relieving cord? That sounds like a suspended cord. That leaves me wondering. <laughs> Just kidding. It's a very nice cord. The music is so nice. Okay, so that's it. That's all I'm going to do to this. Now I'm going to mount this onto a piece of black cardstock. I know it looks weird right now, but we're gonna put a greeting over there. Yeah, a little berry sprig, right? We could do something here. We could probably put a berry there, but like I could use something else, maybe from um, from this set, the berries, or I put a little snowflakey thing there, or even a little pine cone we could attach in there. But I'm trying to stick with all one stamp set except for the greetings this way if you have this stamp set you know you can pretty much duplicate this and just pick a greeting okay so get that on there all right so now let me put this aside because thank you i love these colors too i really do i like that plum punch in there it's something i don't use often enough and it's becoming quickly becoming one of my um my new favorites. My top? Yes, it is a petite top. It is. Doesn't come down too long, which is good for me because I am short. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of white cardstock and I'm going to pick a greeting here. So we could do warm winter wishes, which would be pretty, or we could do Merry Christmas to you. I think I'm going to do Merry Christmas because... So I, I realized this today for the first time and I don't know where my brain is, but every year I make tons of holiday card videos. And then when it gets close to the time to send cards, I have all my card videos, uh, all my video cards ready to go. But this year I started giving all my cards away. I don't have any cards made for Christmas. <laughs> so I am in uh, hyperspeed mode now making cards because I've been giving them away. That's okay, I don't mind. That's, a, that's not a terrible problem to have, right? Okay, so I stamped that using black onyx. You could stamp it using a different color if you wanted to use the plum punch. You certainly can do that. But I love that pop of black for the greeting. I know that's not surprising at all, is it? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out using my die cutting machine. But if you don't have a die cutting machine, don't worry, you can just cut yours into a square using your paper cutter. But if you do have a die cutting machine, I'm sure you have circle dies in your collection. And if not, that's a good staple to pick up next time you're shopping. So I'm going to use the ones from Master Layouts 3, I believe this is. This is the one that fits the wreath builder. And I'm going to cut it out with the smallest circle die. I like this stamp too. I think it's just cute. It's pretty, but it's also kind of whimsical at the same time. So it fits a lot of different styles. Ooh, Cheryl took a mental health day from work to make Christmas cards? Or should I be taking a mental health day? Is that what you're suggesting? <laughs> I definitely should be. Okay, and now I'm going to cut a black circle out of the coordinating circle die. This is the plain one from Master Layouts 3. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are all so nice. 
heavy. I'm not sure what to do with that. I'd have to know a little bit more about it. The uh, memory, we are memory keepers. One thing I can tell you where people tend to have problems with some of these paper cutters is, let me just show you guys, in case you have a small paper cutter like this, and this goes for the Tim Holtz cutter, it goes for any of the small paper cutters that are out there on the market. I'm just backing up a little bit here so you can see the bottom. So one thing that helps me get a good cut, a lot of times people will put their paper in there and then they go to cut it and it gets a little bit jagged. And the reason is because they're not putting enough pressure on this plastic piece right here. And don't just put your pressure up here. Make sure you put your pressure down near the bottom as well. And then when you're cutting it, just ever so slightly pull your handle toward the blade a little bit. And then you'll get that really, really crisp cut. If you're, you know, if you're not pulling it ever so slightly, and I mean just ever so slightly, you, you're going to get a much sharper cut that way. So give that a try first before you decide that there's something wrong with the paper cutter and see if that helps. Okay, let's zoom back in now so it's not like your guys are in an airplane looking down at me. I'm going to put these two panels together, this little circle with this black circle. I sent a paper cutter back one time because I didn't know that. And then I got the new paper cutter replacement. And the same thing was happening. And I was like, okay, well, that sounds like a me problem. Okay, and then this is just going to go right over the center there. So if you want to just stick with the SIP stamps, ink, and paper, just tack it right down to your card like this using some tape. If you want to step it up, you certainly can use some foam squares. So I think I will do that just because they're fun. And it'll give it a little bit of dimension. You know what, I have black foam squares. So I think I'm gonna use some of those. I like the black ones. Cause then you can't really see it behind. But if you don't have them, don't worry about it. And one thing you can do if you don't have black ones, if you just have a white foam square, you can actually, before you put it on, you could color the sides with a black Sharpie marker and then it won't show. So that's just a little tip. It does take a little bit of time. So, it, and it probably doesn't even matter all that much, but if you're kind of like a freak about it, and sometimes, some days I am, and other times I'm like, ah, eh, it's good enough, you know. So we'll put that right there. Make sure it's straight. Okay. So that's nice and gives it a little bit of dimension. Now, what color card base should I use? I'm thinking Plum Punch. That's what that would look like. But there's also the possibility that Grass Green would look really nice. So let's get a Grass Green tall cut here. And we'll just score this and then we'll look at both of them and then you guys can vote on which one you want. Okay. So, do we like the green better? Ooh. Boy, did you see just the way the whole card changed when, you, when we put it up against the green? So I just had to show you, because the green, the green might feel a little more Christmassy. But we'll go back to the plum punch because there's less plum punch ink on there. So that does make those plum areas pop more. All right. So we're getting mixed reviews. <laughs> Hard to tell which one you guys like best. So you know what? Here's what I'll do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this on plum punch. But then I was playing with this layout because I think I might use this as my Christmas card this year because it's such a fast card to make. And I was playing with some sequins. So I'll show you what that looks like. I put these little disco ball sequins on there. Can they see those, Tom? Yes. Okay. So I'll put that on the green and we can kind of look and see if we like this better. I don't know. I like them both. 
So obviously I'm going to be making these as my Christmas card. I got a little smudge on there. I'm going to see if I can get that off with the mono sand eraser. Here we go. That's pretty good. So, and I didn't really score that very well, but you get the idea. So both are nice. I'll probably make some of each. I do like the, uh, you think the plum punch is brighter? Yeah, the green, it kind of blends in because there's a lot of greens, but I like the green too. All right, and I kind of like the sequins, so I think I'm going to take some time to put sequins on this one as well. All right, so that's my first card layout. So let's do another one. You can make cards really fast when you're just doing it this way and you're not, you know, embossing and getting through all that. Although my last card, guys, my last five minute card, the whole video wasn't even five minutes. And that was with my intro and stuff. That is a very fast card. I used holiday tapestry and I did embossing on that. That was a super fast one. Okay. So let's cut another one, the same size, just in case people out there are using the master layouts and they already have that die sitting out. We'll make that three and a half by four and three quarters. Okay. So now for this one, I'm going to use the same stamps, but I'm going to do a little bit of a different layout on this one. So this is going to feel kind of like a half wreath almost. So let's start with grass green again. <laughs> and I'm going to start this one right in the center. So I'm going to do it like right about here. And it's going to go pretty close to the edge. Now, actually, I'm going to start up, up here. I'm going to leave this. So I'll put one here and one here. I'm going to use that other one because it's longer. Okay, so we'll do, we'll do this like here. And then we'll do this one right here. Like that, okay? So that leaves room for something in the middle. And then I'm going to stamp off a little bit here, just off the edge right there and I'll do the same thing down here. So four times I'm stamping this, but I'm not really being very precise. Okay, let's clean that. And then I'm gonna get that one again that has that stick-like quality. I'm gonna do that with the Christmas pine again. This will go right here in the middle. Let's do it right there. And then I'll do one up here. And then I'll do one over here. So this stamp set is the perfect poinsettia stamp set. I know a lot of people didn't realize that you got all of these extra stamps in there. And then I think I'll do a little bit here and a little bit down here, just in case any of that shows, it feels more complete. All right. So now I'm gonna use the little berries that are not berries. They are the center of the poinsettia that is Get a piece of white cardstock here so you can see that. That's this one right here. I'm going to use this one, which is supposed to be the center of the poinsettia, but I'm going to use it to decorate the ends of these little sprigs. Now, this time I'm going to go with turquoise C. I think, you know, I can't make, can't do a video without black or it seems turquoise C either. <laughs> okay. So we will stamp those right here, like that. Oh, that's pretty. That little pop of color like that, I love that. And I'm gonna turn it this way, for there. And this one, I'll do one here, one here, one over here. Yeah. 
this one. That looks pretty good, huh? Just fun to have those, <laughs> those little berries, even though they're not berries. I don't even know what that kind of thing would be called. That's what I love about whimsical stamps is it doesn't have to be realistic at all. Now we could add a few little branches in there. Let's do that and let's do it in tranquil teal. I feel like one more blue would be really pretty to add. And tranquil teal is such a nice complementary color. We could just add like a little sprig of that right in there like that. There we go. It's kind of hard to see on the video, but I'll take some pretty good high quality pictures and I will post these pictures in our Facebook group at Gina K Designs and Stamp TV Friends. And I'll also post it here in the community tab on my channel. So everybody, if you're a YouTuber and you're not a Facebooker, I understand, no problem. You guys will get the picture too. Okay, so now, 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 let's get another piece of black cardstock. And we'll cut this down. Again, you could do this with your master layouts. So normally it'd be three and a half is the white piece. I'm gonna go up one eighth of an inch to three and five eighths. And I'm putting a little pressure right on here just to hold that down. And then that would be four and three quarters, four and seven eighths. And I'm always pulling in just a little bit. If you pull in and the blade hits the other blade, you're pulling in too hard. You don't want that to happen. Okay. So now I'm going to adhere these two pieces together. Okay. There we go. And now I'm going to make another greeting. So for this one, could this be like a winter card? Maybe do warm, warm winter wishes. I love this, this font on this. And you know, not every card has to say Merry Christmas. There's lots of people out there that celebrate the holidays, but don't necessarily celebrate Christmas. And we want everybody to feel included. So I'll do this one in black. Melanie, you have 60 cards to do and you're recuperating from foot surgery. Oh, I hope you uh, I hope you feel better soon and you can start working on cards. I hope you can get a little time each day to maybe prop your foot up and color or something. <laughs> last Thanksgiving. Was it last Thanksgiving, Tom, when I had my wrist surgery? I think it was last Thanksgiving. So I had just had carpal tunnel surgery and I couldn't really stamp for a couple of weeks. And uh, it was rough. It may have been. I think it was. Okay, so this one seems a little, well, let's give it a try. I think it'll be okay. It's a little small, but I think it'll be okay. Yeah. So that's tough when, when something takes you out from doing your hobby. <laughs> well, good. You're coloring penguins. That's good. At least you're getting some coloring in. Okay. So I could have used a bigger circle for that. I may regret it, but we'll see. <laughs> and now I'm going to cut another black one out of the other die that coordinates with this die. And again, if you're just tuning in, um, this is the Master Layout's three circles. But you can use any circles. You can use a punch. And if you don't have circles and you don't have a die cutting machine, just cut a square or a diamond. Some, well, yeah, you could cut a diamond or a square using the paper cutter and it will look great. Okay, so we'll see how this all comes together. I feel like this might need one more little image right in here, but we'll see. Maybe not. 
let's adhere these two pieces together. I might add some sequins to this card too. Holiday Tapestry is a great one for Christmas cards because it's like bang, bang, and it's done. It's so fast, but it can be used for any time of the year. It's a fun set. Okay, so that, I do need something right in there, don't I? So let's add it. We can add it after. It doesn't matter because I used black cardstock, so whatever I stamp, you won't see it. You know what I'm going to stamp, right? I'm going to stamp that pine leaf again with the grass green because that is what's missing right there. Feels like it has a just an empty spot. If this was a real Christmas tree or a, you know artificial, I'd be fluffing it up. So we'll just do that right in there. There we go. Okay. Yes, that definitely makes a difference. Don't you think? And I kind of like it off center like that. It's just very bushy and it comes in really pretty. Okay, so should we use the foam squares again? Let's do it. Got foam squares all over. Might as well use them. Where'd they go? Here they are. <laughs> all stuck to me. Okay. Yeah, the simplicity of these cards, it's just you can really knock out quite a few. I mean, it's only 732 and I've already made two cards. Okay. So this one can be a little hard to get straight. So my tip is just try to make the word winter straight. And then it'll look right. There we go. Okay, so for card base colors... I am thinking turquoise C, because that is just a tiny little bit of turquoise in there. It would be so pretty, especially with the winter theme. So here's the turquoise, right? Isn't that nice? So bright and vibrant. <laughs> yeah, Lara Bassin, dimension is life. That's what she says. She is right. I had the opportunity to go to a crafting retreat and sit next to Laura Basson, and I think I freaked her out. Because <laughs> I talk too much. I just never stop talking. She's the sweetest person ever. Okay, so I'm going to adhere this together. Just such a simple, simple, simple look. Okay, so I'm going to add a few sequins on here, and then it would be pretty sideways too, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be pretty that way. So let me get my connect glue. I'm going to add just a few little sequins to this. So we'll put a little dot here, put one here, and here. I'm just going to stagger them around. They don't have to be perfect or placed any particular place. I'm going to put one here too, because I feel like it needs something there. And I'm going to use Disco Ball, because they're right here in front of me. So you like the second color, pat the second pattern here, colors? I do too. I like it too. But you know what I want to try? And we have enough time. I think I want to try something with pink. What do you think? Should I do something with pink? So I know this was supposed to be just, you know, no other embellishments or anything, but I'm adding sequins because, well, this one's sticking to me. I didn't put enough glue down there, that's for sure. Just because I feel like it needs a little something. Well, it, you know, there's never a bad time to add bling. I think bling is really pretty when it comes to like that wreathy look. Just add something to it. My um, jewel picker is just covered with glue. 
Sometimes you got to pick the glue off of it to get it working right again if it's not working. Tom, I think I just heard a cat. <laughs> Do we have a cat living here in the craft room? Okay, so there we go. There's a few little sequins, a little bling on that. Okay, well, I'll put that one aside. I'm going to put one more, one more thing here. A sequin there. Because it needs it. There we go. Okay. If I'm going to give these cards away, it's got to be right. Oh my gosh. That one just stuck to me. There we go. Okay. Doesn't want to be there. Normally I put my connect glue down. I let it dry for a second and get tacky. And then by the time you get to the very last one, you know, the last dot, that one's tacky enough too. There we go. I felt like it needed that there. That finishes it off. <laughs> Okay, I'll show you these again. So let's do one more. I did not prepare to be this far ahead. So what color pink should we use? I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make a suggestion that we do passionate pink. Wouldn't that be pretty in there with that mix? Passionate pink. Woohoo! All right, let's do that. So I'm going to get a piece of cardstock and cut it down. Again, I think I'll do it the same size. It's an easy size to cut. And I'll cut the black piece right now while I'm here. It's nice, Tom. You can play like the Christmas stuff, right? You don't get in trouble for that. I think that was a yes. Okay, so now we've got a side wreath and then we've got this sprig design. So we could do one this way. We could do something coming out, fanning out that way and turn the card this way. Let's try that. Let's see what it looks like. What do we have to lose? This is the bonus round. <laughs> All right. So again, I'm sticking with those same colors. For Christmas, you would have used red, Marianne. You're right. I mean, that is the most traditional. I'm trying to be a little non-traditional tonight. <laughs> okay. So let's do... Let's do that there. Gosh, I love that stamp. It'd be fun just to do a whole background with this stamp. We'll do a little overlap. that branch again. And the branch, what did we do the branch in last time? Christmas pine, okay. It's so easy. I know so many of you have this set too, right? I'm gonna just pop that in there like that. And then maybe we'll just do like one here and one here. We could do maybe a little bit down here. Okay. It looks a mess right now, but it's gonna be really pretty. <laughs> I like this angle, this horizontal style. Okay, so now I know Mary would do red here. I'm gonna try pink. 
I just need to try this in pink, passionate pink. It is fun. I mean, the, the non-traditional colors are fun once in a while. Oh, that is pretty. Just do a little bit right there. Do some up here too. could do one down here, although I don't know that you're going to see it, but I'll do it anyway just in case, just to have it done. Yeah, something different. You've got all those beautiful ink colors, and there's no rules, really, right? Okay, so, joy to the world. Well, let's see, because I want to make sure that it's not going to be too big. I feel like I might want to do something down in here. Maybe one more little. Yeah, let's do that. And that's kind of a good way to tell. Put your thing on there like that and see your circle and see. Okay, do I need something down here? If you do, just go back and add it. You can always add it. So I'm going to add one more of these in this area here. See, that'll make a big difference. Do you feel like there should be one over here too? I do. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. Do I do it or not? Tell me, do I do it? Okay, I'm seeing yes. Okay, yes. Okay, I'm going with it, yes. All right, and then we'll add that little bit of pink in there. I just feel like we need to spread the pink out. We need to get some of it more toward the outside of that circle. Okay, there we go. And then we'll just put that on there. It'll be fine. It's just loose. It's a loose kind of wreath. <laughs> okay. So now I need another piece of white. And I think I can get that out of there. I'm going to use the Merry Christmas greeting. Because I know that one fits in that real small circle. There are other greetings out there that you can use as well. And it doesn't even have to be a Christmas greeting. So this could be a birthday card. There's no reason why in the winter you can't use some pine sprigs in a birthday card. So these are great cards for anything, not just Christmas. But this one's gonna be Christmas. Did I stamp that in a good spot? I did. That'll be easy to cut. And we'll go ahead and cut that out. Okay cutting machine. Hello, Rebecca, Marco, how are you? Great to see you. Rebecca and her husband make our, um, our glue stands and our brush stands and our inserts for our brushes, for our brush stands. It's great to see you. You know, I don't look up enough to see all the wonderful people that are in here, and I recognize almost all of you. I see you all the time in, in the group, and I see your cards, and um, I hope nobody's ever offended that I don't say hello. It's just every once in a while I just look up, and I see somebody's name go by, and then I can say something. So this is the panel that I'm going to mount my card on, but I'm going to cut this plain circle right out of the center of it because I don't have another piece of black cardstock close by and come on nobody's going to see that right should be doing that all the time to save cardstock all right 
so you know I'm going to use a passionate pink card base for this, right? You already know that. <laughs> All right, now I'm going to layer these two panels together. Hello, everyone. So great to see you. Wow, Tom, we've got over 2,600 people here. It is great to see all of you because we're getting all the numbers from Facebook and YouTube. That's a lot of people. It's great to have you here. We really appreciate you being here and spending your Monday evening with us. You could spend it lots of places. And we, uh, we feel very honored to have you here. Okay, I'm going to cut this passionate pink. Look at this color. I, I don't use this enough either. I do a lot of white card bases, and sometimes I just get in the mood for the color. And when I do, it is color, color. Okay. I have to say, three cards in 45 minutes, that's pretty good. This is a good layout for you guys who are behind like I am. Okay. So we'll pop this on here. Tom, we're gonna have three cards to give away tonight. All right. Isn't that awesome? So I'll adhere these two together. I really like this one too. I think it's just fun and it feels very real because I was looking at the wreath on our front door and it's not perfect. It is very loose. Okay. And we'll put that on with some foam squares too. Although if you don't have them, you can just pop it right onto your card and it, it'll look great. I, I found that popping up this centerpiece type of deal on a card really doesn't add any bulk. And um, I haven't had any problems with my cards getting through just using a single stamp. So you guys should be fine. Is that in the center? That looks pretty centered. Okay. And we'll add a few little sequins to that. Put one up here. One over here. One here. One here. One over there. And we'll do one there, one there, and one there. Okay. Because, <laughs> you know, can't have too much bling. But the bling is optional. You don't have to have the bling. Although some people would debate whether or not bling is optional. So I find that sequins are just so staticky in the winter, it's unreal. But so am I. I take my coat off and my shirt is all clung to me. I gotta get that spray stuff, static guard, or rub myself down with a dryer sheet or something. <laughs> Are you staticky, Tom? Well, probably. <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> probably. I find out when I least want to. <laughs> yeah, when you go to touch the light switch or something. <laughs> there we go. Just a couple more, and then I will show you all three cards. Throw that one across the room. I'm just not waiting long enough for the glue to just set for a second. Hand lotion? Oh, use hand lotion on my clothes? Like, rub it? Like, that's a good idea. Oh, I didn't think of that. That is a good idea. Because I need hand lotion, too. So that would kill two dry, <laughs> shriveled birds with one stone. <laughs> It's my jewel picker that's the issue. It's not the glue. It's my jewel picker. I need to pick the glue off the picker. So what happens is the end, because the sequin has a hole in it, so the glue pops through, 
There we go, I just pulled it off. So the glue pops through the hole and then the jewel picker gets coated with glue and then it makes it harder for the sequins to release because there's glue on the end. But you guys knew that. It was just kind of fun to watch me struggle, right? Okay, so there we go. Deglue your picker, absolutely. <laughs> That's what I have to do. Okay, so let's take a look at these cards. So we have this one here. I do kind of like the plum punch. I kind of agree with all of you that the plum punch was the better card base to use for sure. But here's the one with the sequins, so I'll just put them all out. Oh, heck, let's give all four of them away, Tom. Whoa. What do you think? Whoa. <laughs> Why not? I'm living here. Um, I am. <laughs> okay. It's a lot of cards. So um, so the first one we're going to give away is the Plum Punch one. I will add some sequins so you don't get a bare card. Definitely add some sequins. So Plum Punch. You'll have to write the colors down too, Tom. Okay. All right. So Plum. Who gets... Wait. I want us to be in too. Okay. There we are. Okay. So who gets the plum punch one? Plum. Plum goes to... <laughs> Liz Heidke. Liz Heidke. Liz. Yay. Yay. Congratulations, Liz. You get the plum one. I'll add the sequins. Okay, now who's going to get the green one? Green. These are kind of like sprays. I like them. Green goes to Marty Cox. Marty Cox. Yay, Marty. Yay, Marty. Congratulations, Marty. Okay, and now who gets the side wreath? The side. turquoise. We'll call it the turquoise one. <laughs> okay. Turquoise goes to Peggy Monahan. Peggy Yay, Monahan. Peggy. Congratulations, Peggy. Woo! And who gets the pink one? Pink one goes to Sandra C. Sykes. Sandra, Sandra Sykes. Sandra, congratulations. All right, to all our winners tonight, all you have to do is send your name and which color card you won to info at ginakdesigns.com, and we will get your card out to you. I am about two weeks behind. I've got a pile of them on my desk that will go out by the end of this week. So we'll make sure these get in there as well. All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed these cards and how simple it is just to take a little sip, stamps, ink, and paper, and um, not worry too much about tons of die cutting and, you know, all the different things that need to dry or be heated and all that kind of stuff. It's all fun. You know, I love it all. But once in a while, it's fun to go back to the very basics and just pick a few colors of ink and just stamp those stamps right onto your paper and create a card. I feel so much better. You do? Yeah. Oh, good. Well, Tom feels better. He doesn't have anxiety anymore or stress or whatever he had going. <laughs> I don't either. This was so much fun. So much fun to be with you guys. All right, everybody. We will be back on Wednesday for another Lunchtime Live. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy. We love you all so very much. And we'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.